All right, guys. Great day, Mike here. Hope you're doing well. So I'm going to be making some calls today and I want to share some ideas and thoughts with you and some skills. Hopefully that will help you to grow your business and be together. You know, oftentimes we make these calls and we're in this massive overwhelm as to, well, who to call, what to say, how to say it, when to say it. And uh, really, depending upon what you're doing, your goal, your outcome, whether it's to secure an appointment to go meet somebody for the first time, uh, for a, an appointment, if you're in the real estate space, to preview a home, maybe to go to a listing appointment, to meet a buyer, um, to go look at a, uh, speak to an, uh, another investor about a property that you may want to consider buying, or you have a client that wants to buy something, uh, then, uh, you know, it's kind of that thought, what do I say? And Oh my gosh. Well, there's the construct of your preparation that helps you to get through this. There's a part of the process, which is the script, the dialogue, what to say, the structure by which you say it, how often, you know, it's imperfect in its own sense, only because I can talk about it in, you know, steps one, two, three, four, and so on, right? And uh, sure, that logically uh, might sound correct, but um, at the end of the day, let me just mute this. At the end of the day, it really, really comes down to um, understanding that conversations are just that, they're conversations. You know, we hear the term script, dialogue, what do we say, how do we say it, what is the order by which we say it? And all of that is important, as I said. However, here's the deal. You're just having conversations with people and how you're having those conversations is a series of questions that enable you to, uh, to gain answers and rapport with people. So that way you could then move the conversations forward. Does that make sense? Because if we're just talking and spewing or we might even ask a question but never listen to the answers and respond according to what that answer may have been from the person you're speaking with, then now it becomes more of a monologue, right? To that point. So if I'm right now speaking with you at this point, I'm giving you some content, some information, some ideas and concepts uh, at this point, because there's nobody else I'm talking to directly on this particular Zoom here that I'm doing, um, then it's more of a monologue, right? So when you're talking with people in a real world situation, you have to think about it as a dialogue, right? A monologue is one to many, and a dialogue is two people or more communicating and having conversations thus making it a conversation that uh, evolves over time. So in this process, what I wanna share with you today is I'm gonna make some calls with people uh, so that way you could get a justifiable idea of the sense of this, right? In the order of importance, there is none, but also there is, okay? And what I mean by that is if you understand that there's certain questions to create a framework for a conversation that will enable you to take it to the next step, whatever that step might be, whether it's to do nothing or to do something or to follow up or whatever it might be. Um, if you miss on some of these steps in terms of what you probably should be saying, right? Uh, not necessarily in the order they should be say, being said, uh, you're missing out on a great opportunity because you don't wanna skip some things or just some things you don't wanna miss. And what I mean by that in its essence is I'm an investor, I call on homeowners, people who wanna sell their homes. I might speak to a realtor who has some off-market uh, opportunities for me to take a look at and so on. I might be calling an expired listing to, uh, to see if they wanna get an offer on their house and I can make an offer to them. And I wanna learn about their situation of buy owner the same way. If I'm in the retail se sector, which I'm strictly doing that in and of itself, my goal is to make sure that I get some questions uh, answered so that I can make an intelligent decision as to what I'm going to potentially do with that opportunity. So um, in the order, sure, there's a you know, condition. You know, first, they, they have an interest in wanting to potentially do something. It's either it's a firm yes, or I'm, I'm a bit unsure now, or it's a maybe, uh, or it's a hard no, right? It's a hard no, I don't want to sell. I took it off the market, whatever the case might be. Depending upon where that lead came from, then it is at that point, you'll see what happens. You know, so I call up somebody and I say, hi, my name is Mike. I was calling about your house that I saw on Zillow, and I wanted to see if you had thought about selling it. OK, or it could be a cold call where I say that. Let me step back here. See, there you go. OK, but within the framework, I'm asking somebody if they want to sell. Right. If I'm calling somebody off of Zillow and the property is there that it says for sale rather than just a list of properties, then I'm going to ask, is your property still for sale? And yes, it is. Terrific. Are you uh, I want to send you I want to talk to you about making an offer to you. You got a couple of quick moments. Sure, I do. Great. And then I go into the construct of the conversation, i.e. that would represent the condition of the property. As an investor, I want to get an idea about condition. I want to get an idea about their motivation, time frame, why they're doing what they're doing. And then the third, a fourth thing would be uh, typically wrapped around price. There's other uh, things inside of that, but those are the fundamentals. Okay. I want to gain in a desire to want to do something so I can make an intelligent 
move to the next step in the conversation that I want to spend my time and invest my time doing. I just don't want to arbitrarily talk to somebody and say, do you want to sell? Well, no, I don't. Okay, if I got you an offer that made sense to you, would you be open to hearing more about that? No, I don't. I took it off the market. We're not moving. We're not selling. Oh, okay, great. Well, just out of curiosity, if you did sell, where were you going to? So I could go that route, right? And they might tell me, well, we were going to West Palm Beach. Oh, okay, good for you. What about your plans changed? Because he, keep in mind, I asked the question, they had it on the market. I'm asking them, do you, are you open to a possibility of selling if you could? They said, no, we're taking it off the market. That's okay. However, I want to see if, if there's anything else I can uncover before I disengage. Often trainers, coaches, whatever, they want to tell you, just get off the phone and move on to the next. Now, in some senses, that might make sense. Okay. And I'm not going to disagree with a part of that, but I'm investing my time. And I want to make sure that when I invest my time, I want to try to do the very best I can to pull out whatever I can. And if I don't do it, because literally in this point, I'm going to share with you as I complete this thought with you on this dialogue, it's literally like 60 seconds, maybe 120 seconds, two minutes, right? So do you want to sell? No, we're taking it off the market. We're not interested. Okay, good. Well, I appreciate that. Just out of curiosity, if you did sell, what was your goal? What were you planning to do? Well, we were going to go to West Palm Beach and uh, we changed our mind. Oh, okay. So if you could, would you, or is that something for sure you're it's a hard decision that you all are not moving at all, right? Now, they might say, well, you know, we, something came up. We couldn't do it. We couldn't qualify. Um, we couldn't sell this for what we wanted to get the money out and whatever that case might be. And then I might at that point determine, okay, well, tell me, what, what, what do you think happened, right? So now I'm getting them to converse with me. Now, part of this in, in, in just on a sidebar here, which is really a very important part of this conversation, is gaining rapport with people in order to enable that conversation to move forward. Oftentimes we have ways of saying things that just we do it that way and then we're done with it. I mean, I'm a driver style. I call people. Do you want to sell? No, thanks. Okay, you sure? No, I'm not. I want to sell. Okay, bye. And you hang up, right? So if I don't evolve into understanding a little bit about that person and their style, um, I could lose a lot of business. And honestly, I did. I, I lost a ton of business because I have a certain style that some people, you know, it rubs against. From, you, from your perspective, you may or may not know me, but if you do know me, you know that I'm pretty, you know, bottom line. I'm pretty challenging for most of my clients and people that I engage with. And it's just my style. It's, it, 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 I'm a nice guy, quite honestly. I have a lot of fun. I like to make sure that I get things done. But at the end of the day, you know, I got to be more in rapport with people. And I'd make that mistake. I admittedly do that because I'm so passionate about certain things that I, that I come across like abrasive or overwhelming. And part of that is first and foremost, if I've done that with you, my apologies um, in, in the sense of that I wasn't uh, appearing to have rapport with you. But again, it's my passion. So I have to take responsibility and say, you know what, let me slow down a bit uh, with some people. Other people are cool. They like that. You know, like I like it. Drivers like drivers because we don't mess around. We get to the bottom line. Or if I'm a driver and you're an amiable, I might say some things that uh, I need to align with your style and so on. So um, that's a separate conversation. But just understand rapport is about connecting with people in the way that they want to be connected with. Remembering that people like people who are like them. It helps to build trust, credibility, helps the conversation stay in play. And this is a very important element of all of these conversations that are going to go down. So um, you, you don't want to lose when you can win. And if you feel that it doesn't make any sense, listen, you got to move on. Not everybody's going to want what you're offering. Not everybody's going to want to sell when you're asking them to make an offer, uh, asking them to sell, or not everybody's going to want to buy if you ask them they want to buy. It's just not time. It just doesn't make sense, right? I just did this. I just ate a big meal. I don't want any more food. I'm stuffed. I'm stuffed to the gills. I'm going to take a power nap because I'm so overwhelmed. Are you sure I can get you another round of desserts, another round of an entree, another appetizer? Listen, I just finished. I'm full, right? And when people are full in their world, they already have what they want in the moment, right? Okay. There's not much you, you or I, no matter how good we are, what we do, how talented we might feel we are, that will help us to move that needle to the direction that we would like it to have happen. Sure. I want to call somebody up and I want to offer them some more dessert. And they say, yeah, you know what? Give me another big the big piece of cheesecake there this time make it pumpkin right and so you know yeah if i hear that great or you know i might be talking to somebody who appears to be settled you know listen i'm, I'm good with what i got you know i'm happy i don't want to sell and this example comes up this came up the other day i was talking to a landlord of a property that i call on and i asked him if he wanted to sell he said no so often investors will call let's say a landlord of a property and they get that answer no i don't want to sell because i'm interested in buying you know, homes, right? And a landlord could be an ideal 
uh, an ideal geographic opportunity for me, psychographic, uh, 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 demographic that I'm calling on because it's in an area, it's, it's the type of mindset that is easy to talk to as an investor because they're already on my same playing field, so to speak, right? Depends, you know, if they're just a, you know, a, a first time landlord or they moved and they just had to rent their house because they couldn't sell it. Maybe they're not as experienced as me or whatever the case might be, but frankly, it doesn't matter. But if I ask them if they want to sell and they say, no, we're very happy. I appreciate your call. And I might leave the call. Okay. I left the call and say, okay, no problem. This guy doesn't want to sell. No problem. What about the fact of carrying on the conversation? Well, good for you. Congratulations. How long have you owned this home? How long have you been an investor? Do you own other properties? And you never know what's going to happen as a result of that. But oftentimes because we fear, we don't have conversations or we didn't hear what we wanted to hear, which was a yes, come and buy my home, come and sell my home, come and list my home. We didn't hear that. So we just shut down because we only hear one thing. What they're saying is no. And then we, when we hear no, we don't evolve into additional thoughts wrapped around that conversation. Huge mistake, guys. Even if you don't get anything out of furthering the conversation, doesn't matter. At least you did one thing. And that was you made the attempt, right? Because I can't for sure understand. People, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, are like poker players when it comes to having conversations about buying, selling anything. Quite honestly, whether you're buying a car or you know you want to go from a uh, you know from a small house to a big house, and you don't want to let people know what's going on. Whatever it might be, buying computers, buying a uh, or freezer for your house, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. Most of us are holding our cards to our chest, and we're not letting anybody see what's going on until somebody asks us a question that causes us to show the hand, right? Show what's inside of my hand, because people don't know you. Now, if they know you, it's a different type of a conversation. Fundamentally, not always. But it's sometimes it's more often than not, it's it's a different type of conversation because you have an intimate understanding of this person's world. You, maybe it's a history. Maybe it's a past client. Maybe it's a center of influence. Maybe, you know, the family. There's a number of factors that make that conversation evolve in a different way. So point of all of this, and I'm not going to do the live calls with this because I, I guess I'm just setting this up for another recording that will do that. But I want to share with you what's on the mind. So let me go back to my and conclude on this conversation I'm having with this landlord, this guy who's renting his house out, and I'm calling to see if he wants to sell. He says, no, I don't want to sell. I'm very happy. So again, I want to either end the call, okay? And I might. There are just some reasons I choose to personally say this guy is nasty. They're tough. They're mean to me. Listen, I don't need to get beat up by anybody. I'm just asking you a question, right? I hope to solve a problem if you have one. And if you want to be mean and nasty and ugly to me, I don't want to have a conversation with you because it doesn't help anything really, you know, and it's, it's rare when those things happen, but there are just, once you do enough of this thousands and thousands of calls, then you'll kind of get to just what I mean. So for the basics of all of this, guys, it comes down to this. Are we moving our conversations forward, right? That landlord, do you want to buy, sell your property? I'm interested in buying. Are you interested in selling? No, I don't. I can click, hang up. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Or I can say, well, good for you. I appreciate that answer. Uh, just out of curiosity. So we use words like just out of curiosity. Do you own any other property? Yeah, we have properties all over Florida. Sure. Oh, good for you. Been an investor for a long time. Yeah, we've, you know, the family has been, we in, inherited, but it's always been, you know, my mother and father always owned a bunch of properties and we took them over. Oh, congratulations. How many properties do you guys have? Just out of, I mean, if you're okay sharing that with me. Oh, we got about 20, you know, just here and scattered around. Are they mostly houses? Yeah, they're all houses. Oh, good for you. You happy doing that? Yeah, we are. You know, um, I, was, I was thinking about, you know, have you ever thought about expanding your portfolio maybe to buy more homes? You know what? Um, my, my, my girl, my daughter just had another couple of babies. And every time I think about them uh, having kids, I want to get them an investment property in my legacy. So, yeah, we might be open to buying some other properties. And the other thought is, um, you know, what kind of properties would you maybe consider buying? I mean, you've been in the single, so I'm hearing what they said. We own all homes. Uh, so I heard you say that you own a bunch of homes. Have you ever considered multifamily maybe as a possibility to add to your portfolio? Well, we have, but you know, it's, it's, it's a big undertaking and I like my homes. Okay, great. If there was something that made sense and you, would you be open to that possibility? No, we're good. If you find a house, we're interested in that. Great. Okay. So what if I asked him that question about buying multifamily? He said, you know what? I was thinking that I would sell maybe 50% of my homes and go out and get a multifamily property. And I can get a couple of them because all of these houses are free and clear and I got a bunch of equity in them. And I know, you know, we could probably sell these things and then go out and buy maybe two big buildings with 10 units each instead of having 10, I now have 20 properties from what I sold. Um, is that something that you guys do? Well, you know what? I don't have any uh, multifamily properties now for sale personally, but I do have people that do have multifamily properties that would be for sale. 
Can you tell me a little bit about what you might be looking for or have you thought about it? Whatever it goes down. I don't want to get into that now because that, again, that's a deeper layering of that conversation that because I could have, because I said, I want to learn more in my brain, I asked the question, it evolved to this type of a situation. I've had people say, you know what, I got this. I want to liquidate these to buy that. Like this example here, I want to liquidate my 10 houses to take, because I don't want to go to 10 different properties. I'd rather go to one property and have 10 units in one space. I go there, collect my rents, fix up, do whatever I got to do, and then I move on, right? So again, it's an evolution, guys, about the conversation. The key ingredient here is you being co conscious of the conversation. Don't be overwhelmed by the script in its perfection. I, I, in my conversations, I know exactly what I want to say. I got to make sure I know because I think of the words who, what, where, when, why, and how. Those are the six brothers and sisters that in the world of conversations are wrapped around questions, right? That we will ask other people, okay? Who are you? Where are you moving? Why are you doing it? When do you want to do it? How do you think you want to make it happen? Whatever the question is, you begin it with a why or it's engaged, it's involved in, it's, it's related to the question in and of itself. So if you moved, where would you go? Okay. Or I could say, where are you moving to? So anywhere I put the, that word in there, where, what, who, why, when, why, and how, all of those things, I could put it in the middle, at the end, the beginning, as long as I integrate it into a question <clears throat> in part of the question or this conversation in that sentence or that statement I'm making, that question I'm asking, then we're going in the right direction. Okay. So let me wrap this. We'll come back to uh, some live uh, sessions in a, in a few on my next recording. You'll see it there, but let me just construct this for you. I'm looking to see one, do they want to do something? If they say yes, then I move on to the next question. Tell me a little bit about what you have. Tell me about your property. Give me some detail and overview. Now, keep in mind, I'm talking from an investor perspective, right? And I might even do this as a retail agent, similar factor here, but that's a little bit different in a different conversation. But for this purpose is here, just understand where I'm going. So I want to do something. Yes. Great. Okay. Tell me about your property. Okay. And they tell me about their property. Good. Ideally, if you did sell, what time frame are you thinking about? Would you want to do something sooner or later? Because we can help because we pay cash. We can close as soon as you want or in the time frame that makes better sense to you. What is your preference? Ideally. Well, ideally, they want to do this or that. Terrific. Okay, great. Can you tell me, you know, I, I know you, I see you have it for sale here. What's your goal? Why are you keep, why are you, why are you getting rid of this property? Why do you want to sell it? Right. I want to get that understanding because that gives me the motivation. Now, I put time before that because that kind of pulls an understanding to me or what I'm hearing is their motivation inside of that time question. Well, as soon as I can, which then tells me to the next question, why are you doing this? Well, the bank is going down on us. We're being foreclosed. The tax man cometh. Um, you know, I can't afford to live here anymore. I lost my job. My wife lost her job. Whatever the case might be, they're ideally going to tell you. And you want to get a good idea what that might be. So they might say, well, it's not really a big deal. It's not, it's not a big concern. I just know we want to sell. Well, I understand that and I respect that. I appreciate that. Um, but it always helps me so I can structure my offer when I do make one to you on how to best so solve your problem or your situation that you're going through. That's the only reason I ask. Does that sound fair? That sounds fair. Just out of curiosity, I'm interested. Sounds pretty normal for most people. Does that sound fair that I'd like to know a little bit more about your motivation? I'm not saying it like that, but I said, just, does that sound fair? I said a statement. And then I said, does that sound fair? And they confirmed, yeah, I guess that's kind of fair. You know, the big reason, Mike, to be honest with you, and I would say, even if they said that, I would interrupt and say, listen, before you answer me, just know whatever you're going to tell me is confidential, okay? And between you and me, that's all it is. I just want to know so I can help better structure. So please tell me more, right? Now, I might not do that then. I might do it after they say what they say. So I can make them feel comfortable and confident in opening up to me. Because frankly, it is nobody's business. Even if I, you know, I might talk to some other investors who might like this property, but I don't need to go deep with them. I Listen, I got a deal here. You want to buy it? That's it. Why is this guy selling? What's the difference? It's a deal. I got it under contract. Do you want it or not? <laughs> okay. So anyway, so do you want to do this? Yes or no? If yes, then you move on. Tell me about the property. Next question is, ideally, what's the time frame? Number three is, why are you doing it? Which is, what's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? And number four, um, I see you're asking if it's a public price or they don't have a price yet, or they just put it on the market. And I might say, what, so I see your price here is at $500,000. Yes, it is. Great. Are you open to any flexibility on that? Or are you firm on that number? Well, ideally, I'd like to get that number. I thought about even getting more. Okay, no problem. And then, so now I move through that conversation once I understand their price points. OK, so, guys, I don't want to oversimplify this. I, I might have, although this was a little bit long in, in a sense, because I came in here with the original intent 
but I want to set this up because it's that important. So you can see where I'm coming from in terms of my conversations and dialogues with people. Listen, I've made thousands of calls. I've had teams make tens of thousands of calls and I had bigger teams that made hundreds of thousands of calls. I've had thousands of appointments and I've set thousands of appointments. I've been on many of them. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into that because it's not about me. It's about what I, what I bring to the table as far as my experience. And you might be thinking, well, I've never done thousands of calls, Mike. That's okay. What I'm here to do is shorten that curve up for you. Is it an instant changeover for you if you haven't made a thousand calls, 10 calls? No, it might be. You might just have that in your brain and you grabbed it. When it hit me after two years of miserable failure, it finally clicked. And frankly, I didn't even practice to get to that two years. I just failed miserably. I didn't do what I'm going to ask you to do is fail forward fast. So that way you can get this quicker. And when I finally, when it, when it clicked with me, it just came around because I was either going to quit, get out of the business or figure this crap out and make it happen. And I decided I'm not a quitter. I don't quit. Okay. I'll give up on, I'll quit when it makes sense because I'm ahead of the game and, you know, shifts are happening. Let me get out while I can kind of a thing. Sure. It's responsible. It's strategic. There's reasons for not quitting. It's just, you know, pivoting. That's what I would like to call it. Right. But to quit on something that I passionately know, I, you know, I, well, I want to really want to get this thing, man. I want to get this deal down. I want to figure it out once and for all. And so rather than saying, okay, quit. And everybody's telling me to quit. And it made sense to quit. I mean, really, if you think about it, I mean, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> okay. Not bringing in any money, not doing anything, not being productive. Nothing is going on. Right. So it makes sense. Listen, go get, do something at least to get some cash flow. I might go bag groceries like you did when you were 14 years old. Right. Whatever the case might be. I said, no, no, no. I got to figure this out. So I picked a book up by Tom Hawkins and I read it back and forth about 500 times. I'm being facetious about that. It was probably closer to a hundred times, but I read it back and forth and I finally got what he meant. He said, follow the steps, the bouncing ball. Okay. On the screen. You remember that? If you guys are old enough, they had a bouncing ball on the words, what you were watching the Mickey Mouse show or whatever on Disney. Okay. And, or paint by picture. Maybe most of you guys remember that or even better putting a puzzle together. And that puzzle, when you put the right spaces together, they connect. And all of a sudden, at the end, when you finish it, you have a beautiful canvas that you can keep or throw it together, put it back in the box and try again another way, another day. Maybe it's going to be better this time, right? So this is an evolution. And my expectation when I say this to people is that you either own it and want to learn it and practice it both internally in your own role play, your own getting a script and reading it word for word, memorizing the words, internalizing it, having, the, having that happen, and then going out and actually doing it. You see, doing is different than learning, but they work collaboratively. Doing and learning are two different things. One is logic. The other one takes us to bring to life because you have an experience with it. And when you because I can say it logically, you can say, oh, this guy can say this and that in this way and that way. But at the end of the day, the reality comes down to, I have to have that conversation with a person who might want or might not want to do something. And I got to accept that as, as a responsibility to achieve the goal that I set. If I don't accept that, then me reading a book all day long and all the books here and over there and uh, the audios, and the, I was just showing a, a buddy of mine, all of the thousands of recordings and hours I have of stuff that I got, all of that is great. I mean, wow, cool, man. But that's, you know, 40 plus years of experience. But that's in and of itself not enough. You've got to put this out there. You've got to try it. I don't care if you fail and fail miserably. I don't. I really, I'm not judging you. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't, it shouldn't matter to you. As long as you do one thing, you learn from it. So you read about it. You practice about it. You try to do your best with it in the beginning. And then you go make a, a few calls. Okay. A couple of calls. Make that happen. Have those conversations. Listen carefully. What you, what you went through, engage the best you can. Then you come back and revisit the material that was teaching you how to make those calls. And you go and make a few more calls, have a few more conversations. And you'll find over time, if you do enough of all of those things in, in that kind of an order, if you will, that you're going to hear and evolve. Because you read a book, you applied some of the principles of that book, you went on experience, and you come back and reread the same information again, you're going to see it and feel it and understand it in a different way. because yeah, that's kind of how that went. Oh, I, I saw that that went that way. But the book says this is the way you could have done it better. So I go out and try that little bit better thing on the next call. I try that and I add more stacking to my success. And it just happens. If you do it quickly, it's just really that much better, right? 
Again, it's not an overnight deal. Yeah, sure. I came from, from the dungeon of digging a hole and I had to cut a hole in my socks just so I could see light in my life. But I decided, and then I went at it, right? And taking what I did, what I'm sharing with you, this principle of learning and practicing, coming back and reviewing what I'd learned and going practicing more and putting it out there and having real world experiences. Then it, and I did it in a massive level. I'm talking four to six hours, seven hours, sometimes eight hours a day. And then that's not including the practice that I did on my own, literally. I mean, you guys today with technology, we can do Zooms like this and have 10 people on here, everybody doing a role play together, right? I didn't have that. I had a cubby hole as big as this square that you see right here. And that was it. I mean, that's the extent of what I had. And I just stood up there myself in the corner of a big office with another 150 chairs that were half that were that were 98% empty when I was there working because nobody came in until like 10 o'clock. I had no real competition. And so I was doing this. I was doing it silently. And I had some of my people working with me that were with me, but they were doing other things. And other other agents that might have been around that were like me or wanting to be uh, you know, successful. So they came in early, they, you know, treated their business, I don't know, kind of like a business. I think that's what they were thinking, kind of like I was thinking. Okay. But at the end of the day, guys, you have to do this. So construct, keep in mind you're having conversations with people. And all as we do these live calls, you're gonna hear me feedback what we're doing. I'm going to put it on speaker. Um, there might be times um, I got to figure out how to do that. I know I can do it. I just got to bleep out maybe an address or something just to respect privacy of other people. And if I don't do it, it is what it's going to be. You know, it doesn't really matter. And uh, and if you say, oh man, that's a good lead, Mike, just generate, let me call that person too. Well, God bless you. Karma will be invested with you. So whatever you do there, I don't frankly care because no matter what you might learn, how better you think you might be than I am, okay, I'll go head to head with you right now. I'll go head to head with the very, very best. Why? Because I believe I can win. I know I could win. I know I will kick your butt because you're not going to do what I do. Even though I say, go do this 98% of the time, you ain't going to do it. Okay. Now, if you're different and you're going to do it and you're going to kick my butt, then please kick my butt. I need somebody to kick my butt. I need to kick my butt. Right. And that's the deal. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to be transparent about this. I'm going to be very forthright about it. You may not like it. You may want to disengage and go somewhere else. I really don't care what you want to do. I care that you are successful with what you do. Whatever you do, do the very best. You know, you've heard the old adage, son, you know, if you're going to dig ditches in your life, be the best ditch digger, right? Just be the best at it. And that's kind of this mindset here that comes out of this words and these comments and these thoughts. So for you, stay with me. I hope you do. I'll do some more recordings. If you're listening to this for the first time, do me a favor, wherever you might see this, if there's a, an ability for you to subscribe somewhere here, comment somewhere, I like this, this was no good, you're, you, know, you don't make any sense, or you make a lot of sense, whatever it is, I don't care. Take one thing, rewind this, listen to it at a higher rate of speed the second time, so you can listen to it faster, and frankly, I sound better when I talk faster, at least that's what I feel, but uh, it helps you get through this material, and any recordings that you listen to, it's, it's extremely powerful to go at a higher rate of speed when you're listening to them, whether it's audio, podcast, or video podcasts like this, um, and I'll pull the audio from this so you know what I'm talking about, but it's helpful to do that. In the meantime, I would appreciate your feedback, thoughts, pay this forward to other people. I'll always ask this, family, friends, colleagues, your clients, if you have any clients uh, or you know peers that you want to get this out to, in some spent senses, it's your colleagues, right? But other senses, some of you guys are in, in the space that you're working with other clients. You know, if you're in the retail space, you have clients that you work with. Well, guys, don't forget they're business people sometimes, not all the time, you know, and it doesn't really matter. This might help them if they're a salesperson and they want to learn how to better make calls, you know, they can just change the product, you know, we're talking real estate here, it doesn't matter. The same concept, the same philosophy works for everybody. That's what I'm going to wrap it up with. And I want to say thank you for your time. Again, please subscribe, pay this forward, like it, because that gives me some more algorithms, which I don't have a ton of now at the time of this recording being uploaded onto the YouTube space and anywhere you see it. But this is ongoing and it will be continued there because I have a ton of stuff, guys. I mean, I could share my screen right now. I won't do it because it's not the purpose here, but you'll see. All right. So we're going to do some lives coming up here. All right. And just pay attention. If you want to subscribe, you can click the notification where you'll get a notification. There's a bell. And then you can hit get notifications above the there's three bells and then hit the top one because that will give you notifications when I do these things going live. Otherwise, you'll figure out how to see me. You'll probably, you know, Google, how do I make calls and have success with them on YouTube? And I might come up. If you like me and subscribe to me, that will help that happen. Not for you only, but for other people as well. Everybody wins, and I appreciate your time. Go have a great day. Thanks so much. This is Mike. Make it happen.